present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, August the 23rd, 2014. Already? Already. I would say already Freddy, but you're, that's not your name. Already Freddy. Ah! That is stinking funny! Not really. That's why I'm not ringing the levity bells. It's kind of corny. Pretty interesting. I'm doing Artie Johnson now. Yeah. Very, very interesting, yeah. but stupid, right? <laughs> it's an old show called Laughing when we were kids. Rowan and Martin's Laughing. Anyway, um, yeah. welcome, people. Welcome, yeah. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I will now formally. Pipe aboard with my authentic bosun's whistle, my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. That uh, disembodied, mysterious voice that you are hearing in the background. From, from his special private office and library here at the Research Center. Stratos. It's up in the air. Stratus is the is thin clouds, right? Well, it was a, a city in a Star Trek. Oh, yeah, yeah, Stratus. And the, and, the, and the girl was very skinny and tall, yeah. the blonde, and she had no breasts. She was flat they, as a pancake. And they used the, the people down below as slaves in the mines to mine their product that they needed. So they're like troglodytes. Troglodytes, yes. So, well, Stratus, not to be confused with Cumulus, which are the puffy, big, big puffy clouds. And the Cirrus. Cirrus? Cirrus. What kind of cloud is the Cirrus? I think it's the thin ones. Straight and thin. Oh, well, what's Stratus then? I have no idea. Anyway, let me they're pipe... They're clouds, baby, they're clouds. Let me pipe you aboard, man. Welcome aboard our uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship, the Starship Newsletter Censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling Good. this week, sir? Uh, I'm fine. My back is hurting me, though. Hey, well, we all have aches and pains with this crazy weather that we've been having uh, all year due to climate change. Hey, we're glad we don't have what the Midwest is having and all that crap. Well, I read... Floods here, flash floods here. Uh, oh, oh, what do you call them? Uh, what, the, 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 the dust storm? Hoobos, hobos, what you? Who? What'd you say? Blue balls. No, the dust storms, they have a name. Uh, hoobo, hoobos or uh, who, uh, haboos, haboos, haboos. The dust storm is, dust storm. is like a sandstorm out in the desert in the Sahara. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just a, well, you know, in Arizona. It blows, it blows either sand or dust or whatever happens to be there. Abu, but most storms are based on a, 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 a circular uh, motion with an eye in the middle that's uh, dead. You know, well, most of them. You know, well, if you want to call them hurricanes, typhoons, cyclone, uh, tornado, they all go around. Uh, from what I understand, if you're south of the equator, uh, the water goes down a drain counterclockwise. But anyway, we're coming to you from the Newsletters uh, Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey, of course. Um, the uh, I, I watched a, a news clip concerning the old farmer's almanac prediction for this winter, and it doesn't look good. It's going to be a cold be one. Cold. Old man winter is going to hit us with no but mercy. Now what is the justification 
for the Farmer's Almanac. Uh, Where does it get its information? Probably the National Weather Bureau or... Uh, uh, what do they know? They cannot predict the future. Farmer's Almanac can't predict the future. Meteorology, there's probably more to it than meets the well, eye. They to. can't predict the future. Well, they, 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 well, in other words, they are assuming, based on theory, that we are going to have a horrible, severe winter. That's true. Just like because if, if biblically they, speaking, only God can predict the future. Just like if they say next summer will be brutally hotter than this hotter. summer, and then the summer comes. Uh, I got news for you. They already said that this summer was going to be hot, and guess what? It's not. It's not. We've only had a couple of well, ninety you're degree hot, days. You're hot. You're hot. You're not. You're, huh? We've only had a few ninety degree days. We, I don't think I. We've had low 80s for how long now? But it, the, the the normal is 84, I think, right now. But I don't think we've had an elongated heat wave. No. Like where it's in the upper 90s or a 100 plus. Mm. Not us, no. but out west. Florida, I think, it was yesterday had 108. Well, look look at the drought. It's still continuing. Yeah. I think it's the, the, the California is having the worst drought it's ever had in 400 years. But guess what? The big boys are getting the water, and the little boys and girls are guess, not. Guess who is draining the uh, Colorado River? I hear is the old uh, demon uh, CEO of Nestle's. I hear, and and well, he owns the water on the planet, doesn't he? Well, he's trying to. Oh, yeah. He's trying to because he says uh, we the people do not have yeah, uh, right. uh, any right to drinking water. We have no rights. We have no rule. Why don't they just come clean and say the people have no rights because we want to enslave them? Why don't they just come clean and say it? Be honest. I mean, conservatives are are not hiding their agenda these days. They're very brazen. They're very arrogant about how they feel. Yeah, and I mean, Paul Ryan wants Mr. Romney to run again. And they're not... <laughs> And they're not shy uh, 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 on letting you know. Hey, look, Pastor uh, John Hagee feels that uh, there should be no welfare and the poor should starve to death. And he's a pastor of a Baptist church in Texas. That figures Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Or should I say Texas? Texas. Yeah. Now you know. So they're not reluctant to let you know how they feel. They want. They want. They're greedy. The money is their god, and, and they pretty much want to enslave you. No. Us. Unfortunately, the people who support them have no other choice, they feel, because they're certainly not going to vote for a Democrat. Because they've been brainwashed. Of course. And, and so some of them... they got to go with the evil. And many of them are religious nuts that still believe a fertilized egg is a human being. Yeah. And, they, and not realizing that the Christian Bible says when Adam took the first breath, that's when life begins. But yeah. they're numbskulls, you know. They're Americans are really, they should be the laughing stock of the world, and they are. They are. Okay, let me get this out of the way. The Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh, I love good food. I love to eat. I'm no stranger to that. But here we have a uh, a box of uh, whole wheat rotini pasta from A and P. Okay, it's the uh, they, the A and P brand is America's Choice. You know, remember the old Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, the A and P. Okay, for my whole life, pasta always came in a one-pound box. Yeah, sixteen ounces. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm pissed off because uh, this company, like some others, reduced it from sixteen ounces to 13.25 13.25 ounces which uh, is 375 grams mm. gee I wonder what made them come to that figure 13.25 I guess I guess it doesn't sound as bad as 13 ounces right money what what is pasta but flour and water that's all it is flour one of the cheapest, you, one of the you, cheapest food substances on the planet. I'll bet you if you looked on the label and it gave you enough 
information, you would see that it is not even totally whole wheat. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna they look right now. Added AP okay. flour. I'm not sure if you could see the, the 13. Too close. Well, try, take my word for it. It's 13. 13 point. Point 25 ounces. Okay, there here we go. go. Uh, ingredients: Durham whole wheat and flour. See? What well, I tell you? It's whole wheat, man. AP flour. It's not whole wheat. No, it no it doesn't. The Durham is no, whole wheat. No, it's all wheat. one word. It's all one word, Durham whole wheat flour. Oh, okay. You, you, okay, I'm you sorry. You broke it up. Now look if it says any other kind of flour. Okay, it says, contains wheat ingredients processed in a facility that uses EGG. I'm not familiar with that acronym, but... But anyway, it says, distributed by On Point Incorporated to Paragon Drive, Montvale, New Jersey, 07645. So shame on you, on point, O N, capital O N, I mean capital O N, capital P O I N T, has entered our Chisler's Hall of Shame like all the other macaroni companies that have reduced their pasta uh, from one pound to anything less and, mm -hmm. and it's usually 13 or 13 point whatever yeah, it is same with coffee same with everything coffee there. used to be a pound too that's correct all right chisler's hall of shame shame on you a and p and the on point company on point incorporated you cheap stingy greedy bastards you can't give people a full pound of one of the cheapest food substances known to man which is flour from grains now mm -hmm. granted there there's there still are other companies that put out a pound of pasta not many but they're out there I think Luigi Vitelli is one of them hey, Luigi. I think I think Rienzi I think Rienzi is another but uh you know God bless bless their generous hearts they're giving us a whole pound but I mean, capitalism in 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 a, a crony corporate America is just the devil's economics. When are all those stupid right wing trolls on my Facebook groups going to get it through their thick heads? Honestly, all it is is to increase the profit margin of the company. That's all that's all about. Okay. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Well, before I, I give, I do my little monologue thingy. I just want to say hello, greetings to my near and dear, a very close friend, Miho from Osaka, Japan. Okay, and my also my good friend, the premier uh, uh, nutritional consultant and personal trainer to the stars, uh, Mr. Mario Petrus, and also. A greetings to Steel Stone and Sugar's uh, superstar that belongs on Mount Olympus, Mr. Slick Rick Brown, Rick Brown from Southern California. Okay, um, and uh, he is a trainer in alternative uh, exercise and fitness, particularly for older people, and. Uh, he, he specializes in swinging the mace. So, mm -hmm. greetings to the both of them, Mario Petrus and Rick Brown. And, um, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Stebbins, I want to say hi to a, a really very nice man and a one of the top members of our group. Uh, Uncensored, hard-hitting truth. He, he's originally from Southern California, and he now resides in Michigan. He is a uh, top-notch martial arts expert. So I want to say hello to uh, Mr. Joe Sevens. All right, now all righty. That's what uh, Jim Carrey always says. All righty, when he's pissed off. Well, 
there's no doubt in my mind that conservatives are the middle class and poor's worst enemy. Worst enemy. No doubt in my mind. <clears throat> okay. Want to know why we have a federal deficit? In 1952, the corporate income tax accounted for about 33% of all federal tax revenue. Today, despite record-breaking profits, corporate taxes bring in less than 9% it might be even worse than that. It's time for real tax reform. That's you know it. what tax reform means, don't you? To the people in Washington? Uh, it means putting the ta leaving the tax burden on the little guy. Spreading it around even more. Yeah. See? So that the rich and the corporations avoid their share. That's what that means to Washington. And then there's left, uh, and then the money's left over for their campaign. See, well, the, well, they're always looking for campaign yeah, money, even even when they first get elected. Well, they don't get elected without it. Yeah, and, and guess who they owe favors they get back to? Get that the same old, same old. And guess who they owe favors to when they get elected? The, the elitists that that gave them the money. That's true. I mean, uh, uh, now, you know, you can't call the Democrats the, uh, the the good guys, the nice guys anymore, because they're corporatists. I mean, uh, uh, Hillary, I don't know if she knowingly shoots herself in the foot, but, you know, she, she supports Monsanto, the evil Monsanto. Uh, her husband, Bill Clinton, uh, he um, uh, eliminated the Glass-Steagall Act when he was in office. And much more. And much more. Welfare as we know it is yeah. gone. Him and Nudie Boy. The Newtster. The Ging Grinch that stole Christmas. The Newt. The, the, the Newt. Another blow to toad. That should live under a rock. Like Long, a oh. self-respecting salamander. No, they, uh, 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 Antonin Scalia and Newt Gingrich have the same head, the same bloated round face. They both are bloated toads that should live under a pile of wet forest leaves or a rock. There you go. But, uh... That's their, re that's their true home. Yeah. But, you know, despite the fact that, um, that the right wing are not shy about telling you what, what they want, their agenda. All these imbeciles in the United States are still watching Fox News and still voting Republican. These religious nuts. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you want them to vote for? Baby killers? Secular humanists? Uh, so if, yeah, so People who actually want to allow a woman to determine what she will do with her own body? They want a woman to give birth to uh, to the child of a rapist. Yes. The right wing. They want a woman to be barefoot pregnant and be in the kitchen. So if a rapist uh, forces himself upon her, she has to bear his child for, for carry it for uh, eight, nine months. That's correct. Or is it eight months? Nine months. Nine months. Yeah. Incredible. And of, that, of course, who's going to take care of that baby when it's born? Not, not, the the re Republicans. not the Republicans. They don't even want to take care of uh, 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 any poor or middle class person that's already born. Yeah. Now, of course, if you're a, a little spoiled brat with a silver spoon in your mouth, no one has to take care of you because you're rich. But if, if, if uh, you lost all your money, I don't think Republicans oh, would care anymore. Yeah. No. No. You know, no, they wouldn't. It's uh, it's it's beyond mean spiritedness. I know Democrats. You know, I know they, they they try to say things in a very kind, diplomatic way. Even even independent Bernie Sanders. Even Sand Obama. Even Obama and, and wanted and to work with the Congress. He's still hooked on that compromise. Bipartisanship. Bullshit. Bipartisan. It's not going to work. You can't you can't compromise and negotiate with Satan, and that's exactly. what you're, and that is what your 
negotiating with. If you use the devil's tools, you become the devil. Okay. You can't do it. It's it, it, it's 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 a uh, this whole. Well, uh, six years has proved this, you can't do it. This whole Barney the dinosaur. I love you. You love me. Let's all sing kumbaya. It's it's all a fantasy of Democrats. Yeah. And there are also Democrats that come clean and let you know that they're corporatists and conservatives. You know, as you know, affiliated with the Democratic Party, but. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, it's really simple. It's not rocket science to figure it out. You know, the proof it's is in like, the pudding. It's like the uh, the uh, fable about the emperor has no clothes. Yeah. This uh, Jumbaloni sold the emperor invisible clothes. Uh huh. And the emperor walked outside with his invisible clothes. He was naked. But nobody would say that to his face, except the little child. An innocent child was the only one who would tell the truth. Well, innocent children, children and uh, animals, like pets, they sense things and see things that adults cannot sense and see. You want real honesty, just talk to children. Exactly, and that's why the Bible says that you have to approach God as a child. Yeah. Okay? You can't come with ready-made ideas and ready-made myths and ready-made this and ready-made that. Nope. You gotta have an open mind. Well... And like a child. Speaking of God Ooh. and the Bible, or Christianity. I had a very vigorous conversation with uh, Mr. Ken Create last night, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Ken Create uh, insisted that uh, the the law, the Ten Commandments, uh, were nailed to the cross, and he didn't want to hear anything otherwise. He says because man failed to keep any of the commandments and if you if you fail to keep one you 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 broke them all therefore, but all are sinners so therefore, of course what is that telling you no well he, he says a, a man could not keep the law i just said so the law was nailed to the cross we are we are, but one man did keep the commandments jesus right correct so where is he coming from with this ideas these ideas do not exist. I said, well, I the said... The law, the, the gospel, the kingdom of God, is run by the laws, the Ten Commandments. Well, so what is he saying? They're very, they're very, uh, the, the, this group of uh, evangelicals are very uh, infatuated or hung up on Paul's letters. Uh, and, the and carnal mind is enmity to God. It will not listen to God. And that's what the Bible says. And that's where they come up with these ideas of laws nailed to cross, because they don't want to obey them. It's as simple as that. But the God, the laws were never nailed to the cross. So they are still yeah. in effect. So his his goofball cousin who claims to be a, a born-again pastor says to Ken oh so this means we don't have to we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments anymore yippee yeah we're what under, kind of a pastor would say we're yippee? under grace yeah right right we're under grace now but the point is the Ten Commandments are all basic laws for human beings and what are you gonna do I told him that you're gonna do something bad every day and every day you're going to apologize, repent, and say, Oh, I'm under grace, I'm covered. How are you going to know if and, you don't know the law? And every day you're going to be doing this? How do you know if you're breaking something if you don't know the law? You got a point there, sir. The first six commandments are how to love God. The other four are how to love 
your humans. Right. Okay. That's the laws. The laws are not a burden. They are to teach you how you can have a better life. Well, isn't, it, isn't it a foundation? You can break the laws if you want to. But the laws are there to teach you. If you want a better life, then you do this. God said, I give you two choices. One choice will lead you to eternal death. The other choice will lead you to eternal life. Choose. God doesn't say, you have to obey me. Right. It's not extortion. That's right. You can do what you want. And he allowed them to do what they want after they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Go ahead. Go make your own governments, your own religions, your own this, that, and the other thing, your own banking system. Oh, listen to me. I don't care. I have a plan. I have a plan that will save what I want to save in the end. Well, you don't care. Yeah. Don't care what you want to do. Go do it. Mm -hmm. You know, these people whom you're talking about, they don't read the entire Bible and they don't put the entire things together yeah. from the Bible. Paul's letters. Paul's letters were only to the churches, the 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 churches of God that existed at that time. They existed along the mail route in in Rome. There was a, a road, and these churches were along the road. Okay, and Paul set up the churches, and then he left the other people in charge, and then he would write to Timothy, and he wrote to uh, uh, the Laodiceans and uh, the Philadelphians, and etc. That's all Paul's letters are. Right. They are admonishments, they are teachings to do this, that, and the other thing. But what do they have to do with, uh, you know, God's laws, the gospel, mm -hmm. the kingdom of God, explaining to people. That's what the gospel is. The gospel is not about Jesus. It's about God's, the Father and his laws. Because when you have a government, you have laws. Mm -hmm. Right? So without law, you ain't got government. And that's what they want, because they don't want to listen to God. They want to set up their own committees. They want an excuse not to, not to listen. Yeah, they want to set up their own committees and be in charge. And that's why there will be no humans in the millennium in the government of God. No humans. Because humans have failed at government and etc. Everything else, so they will not be in charge. Okay. Yeah. It will be Jesus and the Spirit beings that uh, that arise with Him. The hundred and forty-four thousand. Yeah, That's well, all will be in charge. Well, of course, the the born again evangelicals say, well, 144,000 doesn't literally mean 144,000. So, oh, of course. I said, well, what does it mean? If, <laughs> if the Bible says something, and it's literal, take it literal. Don't go coming up with your interpretations and your uh, summaries. They read and into it's, it. It's happened right now with the new versions of the Bibles, like the New King James, like the uh, uh, American whatever, they've changed everything. They've mistranslated very important things. The devil I mean, has so, yeah. put his face into that stuff. I mean, some things are in your face and it's very plain, simple, and exactly. obvious in the Bible. I mean, like a, a proverb says, uh, it says, uh, I mean, it says a lot of things, but um, a, uh, 
a beautiful woman without modesty is like uh, putting a, a fine gold ring in a pig's snout. Now, the meaning of that is very obvious. Yeah. Very clear. You know, you, 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 there's no uh, you'll requirement to read further into that. Well, you'll see these people come up with that, you know, the uh, scripture about the um, uh, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Well, they come around and they take well, that has to do with a camel sticking its nose under a tent. What the hell are they talking about? I have no idea. They don't either, but they make up these things. These are religious nuts, just like uh, the worst religious nuts right now is ISIS. Oh, yeah. They're Sunnis, right? I think An offshoot. I think they are really caliphs. Right. They believe in the caliph. They right. want to establish a caliph. Well, when I was in the after Muhammad died, right. there were three caliphs who took over. The first one destroyed Muhammad's. No, the third one. The third one destroyed. Uthman. Oh. Uthman, the third one destroyed. Expurgated all the Qurans from Muhammad. Every Quran today is his and not Muhammad's. Really, Uthman, because uh, uh, the archangel Jabril or Gabriel supposedly gave Muhammad all of his information his knowledge and so the third caliph destroyed him That's but, but but I was speaking to a Shiite Muslim man uh, a very intelligent older gentleman uh, and he told me watch out for the Sunnis they're the troublemakers so you're uh, because they they have this jihad thing so Saddam Hussein Holy Saddam Hussein was a Sunni they have to convert you by the sword right like they did with that uh, Foley the other day when they cut off his head. They beheaded him. Yeah. Poor guy. This is how they do it. And anybody who does that, including your Catholic Church, who killed over 50 million people through history, by converting by the sword. The real God in the Bible does not do that. He doesn't care what you do. They, they not only did that in Europe, but they did it in the Americas to the indigenous people. When the pilgrims came over. They didn't want any other competing religions. You see. Well, I was talking about Cortez and Pizarro when they when they oh, well, the Spaniards okay. brought a, repre a representative from the Catholic Church with holding a big cross, and they forced Catholicism. I'm talking, I'm talking on about Indians. any religion who gets a foothold somewhere. They will censor and stop any other competing religion. Sounds like it, it sounds like big corporations uh, not wanting any competition and uh, and and uh, screwing over all the competition in business, in business. You know, it sounds very similar to that well, monopoly. Yeah. What's what's going on in America now with uh, with capitalism? Uh, and I, I was also monopoly trying to mergers. I was also trying to explain to the right wing troll named Mike. Uh, right, that, the troll that. Um, you know that there's a reason why FDR implemented these regulations on corporations. You know, I guess he he seems to be in favor of a deregulated corporate America. And mm. but this is why this is why our environment is being polluted by fracking right now. Deregulations. Of course. Our water is being poisoned. This is not hard to see. No, not at all. Listen. Everything you've been told about trickle-down economics is a lie. Trickle-down economics was never meant to work. It never worked. It's all bullshit. What we have is siphon up to the top elitist fat cat. What would you say? Anywhere from 20 to 1%? 20%? Well, 1% have more than the 20%, but about 20% of the people in America today, after 2008, have recovered, but the 80% have not. So they have money to burn. Oh, yeah, they got money. This is it. Siphon up to the rich economics, never trickling down. This is a siphon, by the way. Yeah, the trickling down crap all it was just to calm you down. Calm the people on the bottom down. Like religion. Hey, as like, long as you work hard and do your thing, your stuff, you're going to make it. Like organized religion, just to control the, the population. 
Well, well you know my what? My father used to say that. I was reading a, a banner, uh, which it said if um, if hard work, uh, if 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 hard work created wealth eventually, then every woman in the continent of Africa <laughs> would be a millionaire right now. Well, that's the same thing. If hard if, work, if it, hard work, or you would have uh, granted you wealth and etc. The slaves would be the big boys and girls today, right? Hard, Who the hell works harder than them? But there are there are many intelligent, skilled people in the United States that work hard. Of course. And there are many people throughout the world wor world that work hard and work long hours, very long hours, with no benefits, no breaks, and no nothing. And they're all poor. They're just getting by. This is the excuse the big boys and girls use to motivate you to work in their interest. It's very clear. To motivate? Oh, you mean this whole uh, America's the land of opportunity, uh, the uh, milk and honey. And uh, work hard. And work hard, yeah. and you pull yourself up by the, the bootstraps, and and it all and, puts the onus on you. And it makes and 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 the social services makes people lazy and all that bullshit. Or if you go to work for Walmart, you have to be on food stamps to be able to get by. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, and, and, and possibly, yeah, right. You That's have to how be we on, do it. You have to be on social services. That's correct. Yeah, if, you, if you work for Walmart. That's correct. But anyway, I just want to share, uh, I added one extra ingredient to my uh, wonderful antioxidant-rich tea, and that is fresh peppermint from my garden. Ooh. And I could smell it and taste it. Ooh. came up late it didn't come up in the spring for some reason it came up now in late summer strange isn't it are you supposed to take peppermint without enteric coating on it or something no they're, they're fresh leaves that I picked well that's what I mean enteric coating yeah when you take peppermint in a capsule it must be enterically well, that, coated that's if you're treating like irritable bowel yeah, syndrome or, or tummy tummy whatever no this is peppermint uh, no you 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 can use it like that as a powder or yeah cut but, up but, leaves but you'll receive health benefits from drinking peppermint tea peppermint oil you know uh, yeah. is, is very good for you uh, but you know if, if you have a definite um, diagnosed irritable bowel syndrome, mm. then you should get enteric coated peppermint oil capsules. And a lot of stuff that are anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Like omega-3s and cinnamon yeah. and many, many, many. Oh, many well, by the way, uh, your the, the chamomile, the organic chamomile tea that you gave me is pretty good. It has a you nice, should, has a nice smell to it, it and you taste. You should drink it a half an hour, 45 minutes before Turning in at night. Turning in. Yeah. However, well, I'm I, already I, in the house. In bed. I'm, I'm talking about. I turn a lot in bed. Toss and turn. Well, that's why the chamomile. Chamomile. It's called, good for insomnia. Called, but called manzanilla in Spanish. But manzanilla, little apple. What if you take it a half an hour, 45 minutes before you go to bed, and you have to get up and take a piss I'm always, in an hour? I'm always that. Yeah. Well, um, what's, well, the, what's the company? Uh, Alvita? What's the comp which company? Alita. Alvita. Alita. Alita Tea Company. When I opened up the wrapper, you know, normally if it's if it's if it's regular chamomile from a supermarket, it smells good, it tastes good, but not like this. I mean, this I got a nice whiff, whiff. I got a whiff of the chamomile. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a, it has a very pleasant aroma and and flavor chamomile flower you know and uh, it's uh, it's a good company I mean uh, and, and they give you a lot in the bag ah. I mean you could see that Yay. they give you a decent amount of tea in the bag. Check how to brew it you know. What does it say how to brew it because how to brew it? Yeah, I let that sucker teas, I let that sucker soak in I boiling. I know but some teas I wanted to ask you this question a while ago but some teas you only need a brew for like green tea is like seven seven minutes. No, my green tea's overnight, man. Mine's a half an hour. I want to I want it dark as can be. I want to suck all the medicinal value out of the tea, out of the plant. 
Yeah, well, our maximum power. Here's what you I You dig where I'm coming from? I'm digging it. I saw, I saw the other day a lady was doing several teas. And she did oolong. Now, oolong is a nice color. Yes. And I was wondering if the benefits of green tea were also involved in oolong because I like the color of oolong. Okay, oolong is what is called in China is a, is a semi-fermented tea. Black tea is, is totally, fermented. totally fermented. Oolong is green tea that is semi-partially fermented and uh, it is it is the famous uh, Chinese restaurant tea. I think the Chinese yeah. restaurant tea is a jasmine uh, flavored oolong. It has a beautiful, like a, a deep ruby red It's color. more uh, caramel. Caramel color. It, it is good for you, but the antioxidant power of tea is greater in the unprocessed uh, green, green tea. tea and white teas are also unprocessed, yeah. I want to try it one day anyway. What try it. Yeah. Oh, I see it all the time. I didn't know you want to try it. It's cheap. It's like it's like a dollar and change for a big, for a box of 20 bags. Oh, I didn't know you, you wanted to try that. I'll bring it well, to you. I'll try it, yeah. I'll bring you the... Give it uh, a shot, man. The try, oh, oh, oh the, the tea is, the, the tea is uh, definitely very tasty. That's Ooh, another thing, you yeah. know. This because button. I'll tell you something, my green tea lately is tasting like hot water. That's because uh, how, much, how much tea is in the bag? Is it very little? No. Maybe. No. It shouldn't the taste. Bag is pretty it thick. shouldn't taste blah. I mean, it, it should. does. Tastes like hot water. Maybe you need a two bagger. Maybe you need two bags. No. Well, you want some more flavor. I know, but you maybe, maybe there's not that much tea in, in and the like bag. Like I say, of I the, steep it for over half an hour. The company that you you're, you've been using, usually Bromley. Is that, is that British or is it American? Sounds British. Uh, uh, Bigelow, Bromley. Um, they're good tea companies. I think they're originally British, but they have a American location. But yeah, uh, yeah just take a peek and see how full the bag is. It might not be that much green tea in there. It's you know, now what about the tea that I brought you, the 100 bag box from the Korean market? Was that good tasting? I don't know if there was a difference. I can't really tell. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's just tasting like hot water. I think, I noticed Japanese green tea is more flavorful uh, than Chinese. And it looks different. It looks like twigs. The Japanese green tea looks twiggy. And the, the Chinese green tea is very leafy. Le leafy, but the Japanese green tea has more of a kick to it. That's my observation. But anyway, we'll see, we'll see. and then they use something called matcha, which is a, a green tea powder, which is the ceremonial, traditional ceremonial uh, um, tea, the tea ceremony in Japan. Where you have the uh, the girls yes, yes. dressed like geishas, yes, yes. they have like a whisk and they're mixing it. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's matcha. M -A I can dig that. M a t c h a. Matcha. The only problem is I can't uh, uh, kneel down at the small table and no, get you up. Don't, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little difficult. <laughs> no, no. But uh, they have one that's a blend. Anyway. That sounds good. We were very long-winded this week, so let us uh, sink our teeth into these readings. Sometimes it happens. You know, it's funny. I only had one thing to say in my monologue, and it just ended up being a long discussion. Speaking of the two-party system, nearly 50 years ago in his book, Unsafe at Any Speed, Ralph Nader alerted the public to the lax safety standards of automobile manufacturers. Yes. For some years thereafter, he was an effective consumer advocate. I remember, yeah. In those days, he served his country well. Since then, he has served his own ego. Really? As evidenced once again by his recent column 
in which he seemingly champions the cause of independent candidates for the sake of our democracy. Yeah, what's wrong with independent candidates? We will find out. It's a, it's a breath of fresh air. In fact, his views are a poorly disguised justification for another one of his ego trips, his next bid for president. I think we need a, a Ralph Nader. As always, he will claim that he is running in order to bolster the progressive cause. I'm all for that. In 1992, 1996, 2004. I salute Ralph Nader with my lucky Blackthorn shillelagh. And 2008. His campaigns were a joke. Al Gore was and is a true progressive. This guy's an idiot. What? This guy's an what? idiot. Al Gore? Al Gore. Clinton administration, Al Gore? Al Gore, who allowed George W. Bush to get into the presidency in 2000. Yeah, he conceded. Exactly. Early. Not only he conceded, he didn't go down there and fight with lawyers like the Republicans did. Oh my God. Now talk about a, a wussy pacifist. Uh, you know what? Maybe Al Gore did that for a reason. I don't know. Chicken. He's got no balls. No balls, no guts. Now, you no see, you see what I mean? You, in, the, internal fortitude or whatever. Now, now, look, I'm a person, I'm a truth seeker. I think that seeking and following the real truth is the way to live your life and doing the right thing. Forget about political parties, just doing the right thing. Hey, I tell ultra liberal, I tell ultra liberal pacifists off all the time on the group. You know, the ones that don't have any spine. Hey, Republicans are willing to fight for their evil agenda. Why can't progressives roll their sleeves up and fight just as hard for good? This, this because they don't know what good is. Who today knows what good is? When good is uh, controlled by money. Uh, uh, oh, do you mean good for the corporations? Oh, do you mean good for the, uh, the, 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 the rich? Oh, you mean good for this, that, and the other? Good for the 80%? Oh, no, 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 no. What can they do for us? We already got the votes. Yeah. What can they do for us? The 80%. So why should we do anything for them? We have to cover our asses. Hey, okay. when Hillary was uh, running uh, in the, I think it was the Iowa prim primary, Iowa or Nebraska, I think it was Iowa, against uh, Barack Obama, you know, when she lost... Uh, the state, when she lost the uh, the the, um, the state of Iowa to Obama, she she got mad. You know, she was a sore loser, and she says, "Well, the people in in Iowa don't count anyway." There you go. So so that that is something that a corporatist, a Democrat, would say. Well, Bill Clinton was the he. I'm not going to say totally switched it around because the Democrats were always uh, uh, giving to corporations and stuff. But Bill Clinton made it a big deal to be a corporatist. He had it so that the financial system and this, that, and the other thing was giving Bill Clinton money for the campaign. Right. I mean, it all changed around in the 90s with his election. You know, I mean, it became bet, uh, uh, much greater. Let's say that. Democrats have always been corporatists, just like the Republicans. But, yeah, the two sides of the same coin. Yeah. But it became even worse in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But we can thank Nader's 2000 campaign for giving us that great progressive George W. Bush. What? Say what? Yeah, George uh, Nader got uh, 240,000 votes, so if uh, Gore would have got those, he would have won the uh, 
the uh, what the hell do you call it the uh, when you win State. the states. Uh, the one thing that we should do away with. Oh, the, uh, elec the electoral. I'm doing a, uh, a, a the, Rick Perry here. The electoral college. Electoral college. Yeah, you would have won the electoral yeah. college, and the the, 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 the uh, election well, would have been over with. There was a uh, uh, concerning the um, this post that uh, was it uh, Mitt Romney and uh, uh, Paul Ryan were patting each other on the back that they both of them should run in. Uh, uh, 2016. Yeah. Was it Romney won? Uh, a woman, a, a a progressive liberal woman, says, "You know, I normally don't uh, do not admit that I dislike anyone, but these guys are different. Why dislike? She's afraid of expressing that she dislikes somebody. Exactly. You see how these uh, these ultra liberals are? They they desperately want to be accepted and loved by everyone. Why? why I said they to her, why call. not? They won't call evil, evil. Why not? You, you can hate evil. There's nothing wrong with disliking or hating things well, that are bad, people with bad intentions. It's as Newt Greenridge says, politics is just your idea and my idea. And wh well, whoever gets the most votes wins. Now, See, they don't know evil and good. Now, if one, I if one idea is wicked and they fight hard... But they hard, don't know that. You mean we this took is what I'm just saying. tea baggers? You mean we don't know it either. Well, people we can't call evil evil. You're just complaining about the Democrats. That's what their problem is. They can't they can't determine what is evil and good. They they can't. What is evil? Giving to corporations, giving subsidies to the rich. They don't know that that's evil. Yeah, giving subsidies to the corporate, giving away tax dollars from the middle class. To the rich and corporations, yeah, they or, don't know that. Or, or uh, saying that you want to let the poor starve, and the well, veterans. They won't come out and say that. Except Pastor John Hagee did. That's it. Did he say it like that? He said it. Or he said it in another no, subtle and there, manner. No, there's a um, there's a YouTube video that I posted of his sermon, and well, he give me the link. And he is seen with uh, uh, like arm-in-arm, arm. you know, he's taking pictures with all the popular Republicans, like your Sarah Palin, and, uh, you know, the, all the Republicans like him. He wears, he likes to wear a red tie and a dark suit, and he's called a right-wing pastor, so I wouldn't put a pastor. But, but I don't think, and not even Paul Ryan will come out and say, we want to start the poor. They're not going to no, say that. No, his political career will be over. Exactly. So... They will do it underhandedly, they will do it in subterfuge, they will do it in some subtle manner, etc. Yeah. They will use religion like uh, Haiti yeah. does and stuff, so but they, they won't come out and actually they will say not. They will not uh, establish themselves as an ultra-right wing person in the political game. Like they won't, they, 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 uh, they might claim to be right-wing conservative, but they, if, if they say let the poor starve, to end all social services, like the Koch brothers. They want to end all social yeah, services yeah. and Social Security and Medicaid, Medicare, etc. Okay, that's that's the Koch brothers. They're, we all know they're demons. But a, a, a politician, well, if he went that far, yeah. he would never win anything. That's correct. Because they're the, among voters, there are still some people who can actually determine what is good and bad. Yeah. And they know that just just saying it out loud, etc., to just say start the poor, no, they're not gonna abide by that. You have to do it in some subterfuge way, like uh, we don't want our tax money to be paying for somebody who's lazy. Right. You know, some welfare queen. Yeah, assume, you know, and, and assuming, a, assuming that we have a a a good job market in the United States. Well, they they got to put it. They got to put it on some some level where it 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 affects you personally. That's how they do it. See, because otherwise people aren't interested. Adam Smith 
capitalism. It's all about self-interest. And then that self-interest helps the society at large. No, it doesn't. But that's what he felt. But anyway, right. you put things in a, on a personal level for the people you're talking to. Right. And then they accept it more readily. Okay? Yeah. Well, in the case of some Democrats, like Barack Obama and independents like Bernie Sanders, they have been way too kind to Republicans. Of course. In, in, their, in their speech. Yeah. They don't deserve respect. A conservative you got does a, not reserve, you deserves got a, respect. <clears throat> you got a Congress, a House, that has done nothing this year except vote 50 times to do away with the Affordable Care Act. Okay? They've done nothing. Yeah. Not one bill. They tried to shut down the government another time. Uh, wouldn't lift the debt ceiling, ceiling. All these things to destroy the United States government. And they get away with it. Oh, their approval rating is 7%. Big deal. Get them out of there. Clean out the barn, like Ross Perot used to say. Exactly. Clean out the barn. Okay, it's time. Time. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And I will now join with our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for our my meeting with him. And uh, followed by our promo by William H. Morrow III. So uh, we'll catch you right after William Morrow. We'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> on the flip side. Okay, the B side. B side. Okay, we're here with William H. Moore the uh, third. William, um, you know, it's amazing how fast summer is going. It's it's already it's almost Labor Day weekend, right? Another another week or two. Well, I suppose again. Who really cares about about time? Well, we you sound like the Chicago song. Who well, really cares? Lies. What's going on in the world? We have so much to really, truly worry about worldwide. With the war services, wars, and atrocities occurring. Race is about a holiday. Yeah. Let's be honest, okay? Yeah, I know. It's a, the world is in chaos. We've got severe problems and issues. Oh, definitely. There's and, a, and these people that they keep burying their heads in the sand and want to pretend nothing's going on. Well, this is part of your world, people. The moral problem, there's a spiritual problem, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, that we have a society of sociopaths that don't feel remorse or guilt about what they do. You know, primarily right now, nowadays, they're known as ISIS. Oh no, I'm so I'm talking about Americans. I'm just saying the other one is known as ISIS, beheading yeah. children the whole bit. Come off of it. You beheading that, that poor man that, that reporter. That, oh come. There's no excuse and no reason. I watched the video of him talking. He he looked like a decent looking guy. There's nice no, human, looking no guy. human reason. These people are not human. Just because you have the organs of a human doesn't make you a human. If you don't have the emotion and the ethics and morality of human, you're not a human in my book. The best thing would be to squish you like a bug and get you off the planet. But you know what the biggest yeah, more more the, the biggest that. hypocrisy is that they're supposedly representing a religion. Oh, no, no, yeah, well, who is it? Okay, who is it? Everybody supporting a religion, the white Aryan race, blah, blah, blah. Everybody, stop hiding behind the veil of religion. I don't want to hear the crap and excuse anymore. Until you can prove something to me, okay? Yeah. So enough is enough. Yeah, it, it, we're religion. We're the Aryan. We're the Brotherhood. We're, you're you're nothing. You're nothing but pure evil. Okay. Yeah. That's really what it is. People should be judged by the the fruits of of their behavior and how they treat others. You know. Acting like a real human being. So it's something we ought to ask everybody. Define human for me. Humanity. Yeah. No, or human. It's being human. Define human. Well, humanity is the makeup of all people. It means that you're human. It means human. that you're you're supposed to be more advanced than the animal kingdom. Number one. Oh, I don't know about that. We do a lot of things worse the animal kingdom doesn't do. So, are we any better or are we worse? 
you know, in many true. aspects. Very true. So. Now, remember that gentleman that contacted us that we interviewed from uh, uh, social services in, in North New Jersey, Bergen County Social Services, and we interviewed him, and yeah, we... No, uh, I don't remember, I'm sorry. We exposed a lot about social services, the welfare system, and how it's... Oh, you're talking like a, quite a while ago, like four or five weeks. Yeah, a while ago. I forgot all about and, it. And uh, we, we mentioned about all the, the failures of social services. Well, a new, a new person called me, uh, contacted me named David. And what happened with David was he was collecting welfare because, you know, he couldn't find a job. Uh, the, the job market is pretty much almost non-existent. Um, so he was collecting welfare and they knew David had an older car. Okay, a late model car. Okay, um, so what happened was they brought him in for a, uh, an evaluation uh, to renew his welfare and he presented them with the documents they wanted like uh, bank statements so on and so forth and uh, they noticed that uh, there were debits and credits on there going to an insurance company well they questioned it who gave you this money to pay the insurance company and, and what is the insurance for he says naturally it's for my older car he says you knew I had an older car. How did you think I kept it on? I kept the older car on the road and drove around. You have to have insurance. So they go. They 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 took his welfare away from him because his sister was paying for his car insurance. Oh, come on. But but it showed that the money was was going not into his pocket. It was going for the car insurance. They called it income. You're talking about a few dollars. You know, you're not embezzling. But you, you follow what you, you follow what I'm saying. They knew he had an older car, a vehicle. How did they think this vehicle was allowed on the road, and how he was able to drive it? Uh, naturally, he had to have car insurance. But in their little BB brains, you know, welfare caseworkers, they go, "Oh no, the state of New Jersey, the uh, the Department of what is it, uh, Human Health and Human Services or what uh, Social Services? Oh, we consider that income." even though your sister How can that be income? why do you consider that income? so they took away his welfare now this reminds me of that homeless gentleman in Hackensack New Jersey that found eight hundred dollars oh they took away his benefits because that was unclaimed income yeah unreported income oh come on but he brought it to the police why are they going out of their way to hurt people but you know the homeless man turned I it in that. well luckily the press got on everybody's back and he was reinstated but why even do that in the first place yes yeah. well naturally if the guy's got a car and he's using his old car naturally he has insurance but we don't want you to have that and now you can't pay you can't pay for friggin insurance with hundred and forty dollars a month at the state in New Jersey gives him in, in welfare. I mean, it's despicable. $140 a month? I don't understand why they want to play such a dark cloud over everybody. I think it's Chris Christie. I think the Republicans don't want a social no, service system that so. works. I think it's been bad long before Christie took office, too. It's been long, bad for a long time. It's almost like there's a built-in uh, mechanism to fail. In, or, or in I want you all to go up every way to hurt people. If they want the poor to just die and why? starve to yeah, death. Why do you want to hurt people? Like don't, the, you, don't you care about your people? No. I mean, I don't understand this. No, they're living high on the hog. They care about themselves. They're rich. And it's, they're probably laughing at a lot of these cocktail parties. Imagine these poor, and who cares? Yeah, we laughing. have ours. Who cares about? They're expendable. Who cares? And who cares about what other people have? He's, he's sleeping on the street at night. Who cares? Right. You wonder how sadly a lot of these people are being laughed at. Hopefully I'm wrong. I hope I am wrong, but I don't think I truly am. I think they are laughing at a lot of these people. That's why I said the word sociopath. People with no conscience. As long people as I have mine, I don't care about you. Well, as I told you in many of your shows, I had phenomenal parents. 
I was not brought up that way. I, te I look at everybody. I don't care if you're homeless or you're the wealthiest guy on the planet. I'll treat you the same way, which is well. I will come to your aid if you need it. I will help you. You look down upon no one. No, no matter what their color, their religion, their ethnicity, I don't care what. You treat people well. Even if they're rude to you, hold your head higher and be glad you're not like them and still be polite. Say, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. You have a nice day, sir. Yeah. You know, uh, I saw a banner on the internet that was very wise words. It said, character is when, is how you treat another person that cannot give you anything. Like, uh, if, if, a per if you have nothing to gain from a person, how you treat them proves or shows your character as I mean, a human being. Really, not to top my, at my own back, but many times over in different places I've been, I've had numerous people come up to me at different times saying, I've seen you before, but are you always this pleasant and yeah. good to everybody? I said, yeah. I said, this is the way I am. This is no act. I said, I enjoy meeting new people all the time. Mm -hmm. The number of, of foreigners I meet, where I go for coffee every morning. There's a hotel, a wonderful Holiday Inn right next door. I meet people from all over the world, and I get along with all of them. Oh, the, the one right across from the Teterboro Airport? Yes, yeah, down in that area. Where all corporate people and, and celebrities land with private jets. A lot of recording country rock stars, whatever. All walk. I've met them all, and... and I have fun with all of them. Yeah, because of how you treat people. Yes. So, th you know, those words are make a lot of sense. It's how you treat people that you, where you have nothing to gain from them. I want nothing. You know what? I, well, you're wrong. You're wrong. There is something I want to gain from them. Their friendship. So in a way, it's kind of greed. I want their friendship because I like them. They're nice people. Right. So in a way, yeah, I want something from you. Yes. A nice hello. Talk to me. Yeah. I walked in the other day at the Holiday Inn. One of the pilots was sitting there. I didn't see him. Waiting for his shuttle ride to his jet to fly his client. He used to fly Peyton Manning and all the, everybody around for the Colts. Right. I hear, hey, Tex. I turn. I said, oh, Charles, what did you get back in town? And we talked for a good half hour. That's... You can't buy that. Even people smiling and saying thank you if you hold the door open for them, even that is, is nice. Well, when I hold the door for people, well, I hold it for a long time because I'm in no hurry. I'll hold it for them when they may, might be 10, 15 feet or yards away and they start to move fast. And I said, oh, take your time. Hurry up. And we start laughing and we start talking. You make a new friend. Yeah, what, what about when you're online in a store and... Um, it's great that if you're if you're talking to somebody friendly and you're making them laugh and you're you're saying something real funny, that's wonderful. But there are people with no personality and no sense of humor. Mean and rude. That but, would say but, nothing but to you. But I I would say the nice people I've met in line at a grocery store far outweigh the bad. I've met some wonderful people in lines and stores, grocery stores, what have you. Uh, and we laugh. I had an older woman a couple of times, different ones, in front of me with a card. They were a little slow with their card and whatever, and punching the button. They said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, oh, no, please take your time. Hurry up. And we start laughing and laughing. You know, just make, make fun of it. I said, man, we can take all the time you need. I don't care. Yeah, people today are very uptight, very defensive. Were you, were you kidding with them? They have a bad attitude. Yeah, I said, man, you take all the time you need. I look at the cashier and said, by the way, she's buying all my stuff today for me, okay? Because she owes me. And we start laughing. Make fun of it. My God, does everything have to be so horrible? Hey, we've all got problems, okay? Yeah. Don't think I'm problem free. The stress I'm under, James, you know my, what's been going on in my life. So we've all got problems, but I'm not about to become miserable and treat people poorly. Right, and you don't take, that will not happen. You don't take out your, do your, not take it take out your problems out on other no, people. No, no. Your frustration. I'm feeling bad, but it's good to meet, still meet people. Well, this situation, this situation, not to change the subject of police brutality happening all over the country, this falls into the um, the whole agenda that the elitists have to establish a corporate oligarch, a fascist system, a police state that eventually wants to enslave the poor and, and middle class well, or you kill can, off you the can't poor. Really say that because it varies from city to city, from town to town. They all yeah. have different ways of doing things. But they're militarizing the police now. Well, they're they are, them. and that's by the federal government because it's surplus equipment per se 
is that the show of force they need? Probably not. But then again, in some of these cities, you got to remember in L.A. not too long ago, those guys walking down in broad daylight, armed to the hilt, the cops didn't have the right weapons to battle them back. So even the criminals are getting better. You mean like the, like the, uh, the gangs and the drug they, kingpins? Yeah, so you need your assault and your SWAT team. Well, so, yeah, uh, but what about looting? What about when people riot? They use it as an excuse to, to rob stores. Yeah, look at the, the movies in Ferguson. They're fighting our outsiders, agitators, not people from Ferguson per se. So they're coming it's in. outside agitators from New York, L.A., really? Florida. They are not the people of Ferguson. You've seen a number of the Ferguson people grabbing these guys and leading them over to the cops and saying, here, take them. So you got to make sure all the facts are in on yeah. this stuff, too. And then you, and then you have um, totally... Innocent, peaceful protesters getting hit with rubber bullets in Ferguson. That's not right. Rubber. Now, the shots fired where the people got shot during the riots, the, uh, the, the protests or whatever, and through the Molotov cocktails, not one was by the police. The shots were fired by the outside agitators mm -hmm. that were in the crowd. Oh, it's the game thing. Oh, by the way, the rubber bullets do damage. They, they showed the one. Oh, the it, the it woman lifted her shirt up. It's not going to kill no, you. No, it, it was a deep indentation. I know, I saw it. It could take... And it's all red. Yeah, that, that's no big deal. The bottom line, it could take an eye out if you aim for an eye. But I don't think these guys with the rubber really yes. aim for the head. They know it's rubber, yeah, so aim well, low. This woman, she claims she was just there holding a sign. I don't know. Maybe she was yelling and screaming at them. She claims. That's her side. Yeah. I'm not saying she's lying. We've got to hear yeah. the whole story. I don't know. Maybe there. Maybe she was screaming and calling them uh, names. Well, and there's something wrong with that. Yeah, you don't shoot somebody with a rubber bullet. Me names. Yeah. I mean, not really. Well. And tear gas. Uh, tear gas is uh, was actually banned in many countries uh, by, for the police to use. But they're they're still using it in the United States. Well, other countries have some different rules that vary from ours. Others have euthanasia. We don't, and, uh, yeah. but we really do. You know, it goes on. So uh, true, true. Uh, so we don't know. We don't know. Well, it's a it's a world in turmoil, without it is, a doubt. Sadly, sadly, it is. And it's getting worse. I don't see any any change. I see it snowballing. Is what I see. I don't see the snowball getting smaller yeah. melting. So. I mean, when you see the billions and trillions that are given away to other countries and given away as subsidies to the corporations and then you look at a social program for the poor your friend over a hundred some odd dollars for car insurance it's because the sister paid for it right that is a pretty big right. imbalance as far as I'm and to concerned. expect a poor person to live on hundred and forty dollars a month for a welfare month. a month and and what is so, food what is food stamps anyway How, what's the most they can give you it's not it's not a lot of money the bottom line is you said the most is not much it's not much I think the max as a single individual it's not much. It goes up the more with each child you have, I right. believe. And if you're a single but, um, adult... If you're single, it's not much. It's like $30 a week. $30 a week. So we're talking about crumbs, actually. Crumbs. Well, no, let's use a better food. Peanuts. Peanuts. You know, so... Well, it could be crumbs to peanuts. Let's just give yeah. it a range. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's nothing compared to... All the free taxpayers' money that, that's well, just well, being handed out. You know? What if you the rich? They're going to say change what you eat. Okay, fine. But what if you like roast beef or whatever? A pound nowadays is twelve to thirteen, fourteen dollars. My, my sister spent twenty dollars for roast beef uh, one time. So what do you, what do you buy? So what I'm going to buy? Am I going to have to live on nothing but canned goods and day old bread or whatever? I mean, what? Or pet food? Yeah, I'm. Which a lot of people are, especially the elderly, I understand. And that's just not right. It's horrible. It's really not that good for pets. Let's be fair here. No. Okay? So, no. Uh, I mean, they're not, yeah, we're not yeah. talking about good companies in a supermarket like a Nova, uh, Paul Newman brand, uh, you, yeah. you, you, uh, Iams, uh, yep. uh, Blue Buffalo, you know, these, these are top of the line. It's, it's garbage with GMO, genetically modified foods. But the, the thing is that the people, you see how fast they forget the voter once they get elected? They totally don't care about the, the people that put them in. Oh, we like, discussed this before. They're sold out. A lot of women I've heard say, oh, he's cute or whatever. That's not a pre-roll. 
prerequisite for voting the cuter candidate? Oh, please don't ruin your right to vote that way. Yeah. Vote for the more intelligent, the more culpable, the more probably, hopefully capable yeah. candidate, not well, cuter. Well, this November, we have a very important election day. I just hope all young people, as well as the elderly and uh, disabled people, everybody should make it their business to get out and vote. Well, tell them to do what I always do, vote twice. Get a fake <laughs> name, fake IDs, and go back. Well, you put down Man God, and then you vote, and then you I, put down... I feel a million, so I go back with my real name, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> you know, Elmer, Elmer Fudd? I don't. Shh. Oh, be really quiet. We're hunting wabbits. I'm hunting wabbits. Waskowy, widow, gray wabbit. Well, we better go until next time, everybody. Bye-bye. That's true. Bye-bye, William. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. Thank you, William H. Morrow of the Third, for a wonderful uh, get together and doing promo. Um, I want to say uh, hello and give my greetings and best wish wishes to uh, Paul Terrace uh, Walkowinski of the uh, Indian Club World Tour. Uh, 2014. So far he has traveled from his home in Perth, Australia to India and from India to Iran, which was a very fascinating, powerful visit for him. And then uh, now he's in London, England. And uh, of course the photos are wonderful and so are the videos. And uh, I think he has a few more stops. Um, I think it's Denmark, Poland, Finland, and France, something like that. So my greetings to Paul Wolkowinski. Uh, be safe and have fun. Most important. Um, okay. Now we were just talking about the uh, ALS uh, ice bucket challenge. It's getting very annoying, but it's succeeding. They've raised how much money so far? Forty-two million. So far, forty-two million. It, it's uh, you know, but like I was discussing with Mario Petrus, such a small amount of every dollar, a fraction of every dollar, actually goes towards the worthy cause, which to me is a scam. And mm -hmm. and plus, the CEOs and presidents of these large charities are making an uh, astronomical salary which they have no business doing for a fundraiser. It's not Monsanto or Nestle's, it's a fundraiser. You know? It's a non-profit. It's a non-profit organization, so they are stealing, yes, I will be, I will use that word, they are stealing money from a charity to give themselves astronomical salaries. Okay, uh, much of the work is supposed to be voluntary, not for people to get paid very well doing. It's a charity, let me remind you again, it's a charity, so be charitable, not greedy. All right, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. Among the many advantages the 
Republicans and Democrats have conferred upon themselves is their privileged position on the voting ballot. The establishment political parties are guaranteed the first two columns on every ballot. The other political parties, such as the Libertarian Party, are then put in a lottery drawing for columns three and above. According to state election law, the Republicans and Democrats lose their special columns on the left of the ballot if neither can poll at least 10% of the votes cast in the previous assembly election. In 2014, only 8% of eligible New Jersey voters participated in one of the two taxpayer-funded primaries. Some 10% of 3.7 million votes is 370,000. The law is clear. Neither party even came close. Hmm. However, a court decision of 1999 incorrectly interpreted polling at any primary election as all the primary elections combined. This means low primary turnout doesn't matter. Using total votes combined, including a local or a county race, ensures the Republicans and Democrats can never lose their special ballot advantage. This will again be the case in the upcoming November election. Nationwide, only 31% of voters self-identify as Democrats and 25% as Republicans. Well, I'm, I'm a registered independent by choice. Yet the state and the court continue to interpret the election laws in ways that blatantly discriminate in favor of the two established political parties. Oh gee, I wonder why. Uh -huh. The time has come to level the playing field and give all political parties equal access. Absolutely. To and position on the ballot. And overturn Citizens United. And any other uh, 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 law that was based on a non-existent precedent. That is, that corporations are persons under the 14th Amendment. It doesn't exist. That's just, an, that's just a law that they paid for to have put in to give them more power. They didn't pay. The but guy I mean, was a crook. He was corrupt. Okay. The clerk. It's a head note. That's all it is. On a decision. He wrote on the top of a decision. Corporations are now people under the 14th Amendment. That wasn't what the decision was about. Then how did that head note? Ah, because then, came. when another case came up, dealing with something like that, they used that precedent and said corporations are persons. It wasn't, so, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a judge decision. It wasn't a precedent. It wasn't a precedent. Okay. It's not even part of the law. It was a, it was a California Clara, Clara County, uh, and a railroad dispute. Did the Democrats in Washington land. mention this? Nobody knows this. Tom Hartman had to dig it out by going uh, back in history. 
the Supreme Court oh my God. is the one who made this big error. If it was indeed an error, you see. No, they just liked the way it sounded. No, it was a sop, a favor to big business. Yeah. Huh? Because that's what the Supreme Court loves, is big business. They don't love the little guy. No. That's for sure. Especially the, um, the right wing demonic justices. Uh, well, they didn't exist back then, of course. Right. But the judges were on the take. You know, if you look back in the history of New York and New York City, the whole thing was totally corrupt. I mean, look at The Godfather. That was it. You bought the damn judges. You bought the damn police. Capitalism is was was basically corrupt. You might as well just say since the since the industrial revolution. Well, of course it's corrupt. It only gives to those who have. What do you call that? If you don't have, you're not rewarded in capitalism. You gotta have. And you can't get in order to have because the haves arrange it so the people that want to get to be able to have will never get and or, have. Or if they do get, they have to come to the haves with their hand out. Please, Mr. Bankster, give me a loan so I can expand my business. You see, I have a little, I have a little cart on, on a corner. You think of you think a, a a bank is going to feel compassion for a, a little push cart man? No. 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 Not that. That's why it doesn't happen. Okay. It happens very rarely. I mean, you got Larry Flint out there. Hustler magazine uh, 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 on five hundred dollars. Oh, oh, really? Where the hell can you do that today? It's not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I think there's a story, too, about Hugh Hefner. He started out cheap, too. Well, a lot of people start out cheap. I mean, the, the first Walgreens in, in Chicago, I mean, the first Walgreens that that was ever built, it was started out being a, a family-owned business uh, right on the corner. You know, I mean, they, uh, but, but to try to be a family-owned business on the street corner now and, to, and, and become a corporate, nationwide corporate giant. You need to go somebody for a loan to expand your business. Now, if you have a, if you have a, a family-owned business and you have one store only, okay, and it's called Eisenman's, and right. You, yeah, yeah. Make him and, make some money for and, me. And you have lofty ambitions, and you want to get a loan to expand. I mean, really expand. You have to go to somebody who has. You have to go to somebody who has, and 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 hope that they will give you the loan. Yeah. To build a second, third, or maybe several Eisenman stores. Yeah. If they give it. To Baby. But that's how it's done. Yeah. Little change of pace here. Tomato paste? Ch oh, change of pace. A little Amy Dickinson. Oh, she's like Dear Abby? Correct. I had been married for more than 20 years to a very nice man who was a good father. We generally get along, but we don't have much of a romantic relationship. You know, he, does, he doesn't have uh, much lead in his pencil? It has always been this way. At least since early dating. Takes two to do the tango. He works hard. And is devoted to both his career and children. Oh boy, the kids... That, that'll, that's a boner killer right there. And I feel like our relationship is not that important. 
For the past few years, we have spent very little time together as a couple. It has gotten to the point that we don't have much to do or say to each other. I feel very lonely and can't seem to find any comfort with him. We have been to marriage counseling, but our issues were never resolved, right. at least to my satisfaction. Or at least they're trying. Well, they were paying that uh, counselor, weren't they? Well, you, you, yeah, it's true. Now, you know what the, and the counselor uh, never got, got, got to the issues? Yeah. What kind of counselor is that? What kind of, what kind of social worker or, or psychologist is this? Yeah. You know the number one killer of uh, sex drive in women? You know what it is? In women? In women. I wasn't aware that women had a sex drive. Yeah, I wasn't aware of it too, but the, the number one killer that would eliminate sex drive in women is wedding cake. <laughs> Uh, I don't understand that. Well, when they get married, you know, you know, men complain they don't, they don't get it like they did when they were dating. When once they get married, they get it very little, and if they have kids, oh. they get it even less. All right. Well, uh -huh. You know what I mean? Wedding cake, marriage. Okay. I feel like we are friends, but not lovers. As I get older, I wonder what will become of us. How we will deal with the loneliness as our children move away. Do you have any advice? Okay. Amy says, Thoughtful parents and partners try to keep the relationship fire stoked during the kids' younger years by having date nights. Going away together? Putting the marriage at the center of the family. Without the kids' interruptions. In your counseling sessions, are you only looking for ways for him to change? Are there things you could do differently to try to inspire a shift in your marriage and other relationships, thus easing your loneliness? To enjoy a companionable togetherness, you two have to spend time together. Simply put, you have more to talk about when you've done things together. Traveling, hiking, bike riding, going to concerts, working on a home project together. Whatever, whatever are all positive places to start. Meanwhile, you should definitely continue with professional counseling on your own. Your loneliness could have deeper roots than your marriage alone. Maybe it's not the husband's fault after all. Well, we never know because the counselor didn't get at those issues. Thank you very much. Counselors are just taking their money. Exactly. My perk. My total perk. Exactly. Yeah. What do they do? They sit there and say, uh, "So tell me, uh, tell me about your week. Uh, how does that make you feel?" <laughs> uh huh. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And jots things down on a clipboard. How does it make you feel? With my hands. <laughs> Kim Min Ku has an easy reply to new American research that hits South Korea where it hurts. In the noodles. Where? The noodles? The noodles. Something's wrong with South Korean noodles? Really? Drunk and hungry, just after dawn, he rips the lid off a bowl of his beloved fast food. Wobbling on his feet, still defiant over a report that links 
instant noodles to health hazards. You mean like ramen? Yes! Exactly ramen. Wow. Well, I, I don't like inst I don't eat instant noodles. I boil the noodles from scratch. Yeah, I get itchy when I boil noodles you know, from scratch. <laughs> anyway, continue. There's no way any study is going to stop me from eating this, says Kim. His red face beaded with sweat as he adds hot water to his noodles in a soul convenience store. You know, Seoul, Korea. You know that these, uh, the Korean market near us called H Mart, it's a nationwide chain, big store. They have a whole, they have like almost an entire aisle. I would say 50%, I'm sorry, 50% of one aisle is dedicated to these uh, instant ra uh, ramen noodle type uh, 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 dinners, dehydrated. Quite a, quite a bit of variety. They're in a plastic package, each serving. And I've, I've had them, they're, they're quite tasty. Very spicy, unless you pick the mild ones. But uh, yeah, so what's going on? They found something, a chemical in the ramen? We will find out, won't uh, we? <coughs> His mouth waters, wooden chopsticks poised above the softening strands. His glasses fogged by steam. At last he spears a slippery heat. Let's forth a mighty noodle coating blast of air and start slurping. Oh, I was going to ask you, how do you eat a noodle soup with chopsticks, with chopsticks? and then uh, you just answer my question. He, he, he shoves it in his mouth in a slurping manner at and the edge of the bowl. And then he'll probably slurp the juice later. Lovely. This is the best moment, the first bite. Kim freelance film editor who indulges about five times a week. The taste, the smell, the chewiness, it's just perfect. Hey, I love it. I love it. But, you know, not not, a, not, not if, uh, something's in it that shouldn't be. Instant noodles carry a broke college student aura in America. It was cheap. But they are an essential, even passionate part of life for many in South Korea po and folk. across Asia. Po folk. It's very inexpensive. Hence, the emotional heartburn caused by a Baylor Heart and Vascular Hospital study. in Texas that linked instant noodles consumption by South Koreans to some risks for heart disease. Yeah, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a low-fat, it's really, it's a low-fat and low-sugar if you're it's eating. white flour. That's not low-sugar. Oh yeah, the noodles are, are made from refined flour. Uh -huh. These noodles are. The study has provoked feelings of wounded pride, mild guilt, stubborn resistance, even nationalism among South Koreans who eat more instant noodles per capita than anyone in the world. Maybe that's why I eat soba. Soba is made from whole wheat and, and buckwheat flour. Many of those interviewed have vowed, like Kim, not to quit. Other noodle lovers have offered up techniques they swear keep them healthy. Taking omega-3, adding vegetables, using less seasoning, avoiding the soup. Some dismiss the study because the hospital involved is based in cheeseburger gobbling America. Yeah, we, we, we know that all too well, U.S. healthcare system. It's, it's the blood sugar spike that's going on with refined carbohydrates that's causing the heart disease. 
The heated reaction is partly explained by the omnipresence here of instant noodles, which for South Koreans usually mean the spicy, salty ramyeon that costs less than a dollar a package. Individually wrapped disposable bowls and cups are everywhere. Internet cafes, library, trains, ice skating rinks. Elderly South Koreans often feel deep nostalgia for instant noodles, which entered the local market in the 1960s as the country began clawing its way out of the poverty and destruction of the Korean War into what's now Asia's fourth biggest economy. Many vividly remember their first taste of the once exotic treat. And hard drinking South Koreans consider instant noodles an ideal remedy for aching alcohol laden bellies and subsequent angles. Ramyeon is like kimchi. Kimchi. Kimchi, I was going to say. Kimchi. Kimchi, kimchi is, is a a, mar a very spicy, hot, marinated uh, a cabbage, uh, um, like a salad. Yeah. Very, it's very hot. Okay, it says a lot of garlic in it. Yeah. Ko Dong Yin, 36, an engineer from Seoul, referring to the spicy, fermented vegetable dish that graces most Korean most Korean meals. The smell and taste create an instant sense of home. Well, it's very warming, to say the least. The U.S. study was based on South Korean surveys in 2007 to 2009 of more than 10,700 adults ages 19 to 64, half of them women. It found that people who ate a diet rich in meat, soda, and fried and fast foods, including instant noodles, were associated with an increase in abdominal obesity and LDL or bad cholesterol. Yeah. Eating instant noodles more than twice a week was associated with a higher prevalence of metabolic syndrome. Another heart risk factor in women, not in men. The study raises important questions, but can't prove that instant noodles are to blame, rather than the overall diets of people who eat lots of them. What's jumping out is the sodium intake is higher in those who are consuming ramen noodles another factor. What yeah. we don't know is whether it's coming from the ramen noodles or what they are consuming with the ramen noodles. Well, the one thing that all these uh, prepackaged instant ramen noodle um, um, products have in common is they all have monosodium glutamate. That too. Yeah. Some people have a bad reaction to it. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it is a nerve killer. MSG? Yeah. Lovely. Nice. A serving of the top selling instant ramyeon provides more than 90% of South Korea's recommended daily sodium intake. Is that how Koreans? Spell the word ramen, ramyeon? Ramyeon, R A M Y E O N. Uh, maybe but that's. But the, uh, the name on the package is ramen. Ramen, yeah. R A M E N. They probably did that to uh, allow the uh, international public to pronounce it. 
Still, it's tough to expect much nutrition from a meal that costs around 80 cents. Choi Yong Min, marketing director for Paldo, a South Korean food company. I can't say it's good for your health, but it is produced safely. Yeah, I used to buy the, uh, in the Korean market, I used to buy the uh, instant noodle soup called Seafood Party. It actually had a lot of dehydrated uh, seafood in it. It was uh -huh. real seafood and it was pretty damn good, but, you know, it was, uh, wasn't cheap. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I used to get a big package of, I forgot how many were in there, but it was a pretty sizable package with little, with the servings inside, individual servings. And I would put it in a large pasta bowl and, and then you would pour uh, boiling water on it and cover it, let it sit, and there you go. You would have your soup. Zoop. Or stew, whatever you want to call it. I want to say hello to uh, from the Indian Club World Tour in uh, from the United Kingdom, Barry Hutchings, uh, and I would like to also say hello to Zay Ricardo, a Portuguese uh, gentleman that lives in Ireland, uh, for your participation, partic participation with Paul uh, Wolkowinski in his Indian Club World tour 2014 okay say Ricardo and Barry Hutchins okay what are you what are you gazing at right now keep an eye on him that he only opens that bowl not any of the other all right she's got it oh it's a it's a it's a cat dilemma it's smoky yes yeah, smoky is um, is not does not belong to Reverend Bill it belongs to someone else but he is a uh, he's a moocher He's a, a, he's a mini to moocher. Federal authorities have tightened rules for the most commonly prescribed painkiller in the United States. The latest in a series of policy changes aimed at painkiller abuse and overdose deaths. Absolutely. Prescription painkillers, uh, maybe even over-the-counter. Use. Products containing hydrocodone, an opiate found in drugs like Vicodin, will now be restricted as a Schedule II controlled substance like oxycodone. Oxycodone? Oxycodone? Isn't that Rush Limbaugh's, yes. Rush Limbaugh's uh, addiction? A reflection of the drug's high potential for abuse. According to a rule released Thursday by the Drug Enforcement Administration. The rule, which takes effect in 45 days, prohibits automatic refills of products containing hydrocodone and reduces the number of pills allowed per prescription to a three-month supply written in 30-day increments. So you have to take it 30 days and go back to the doctor, get another prescription for 30 oh, more man, days. and you, got, you get charged... Uh, That's for, correct. You get charged for another office visit every month? Well, that's what the Codex Alimentarius wants to do. Oh, right? man. If I want to take vitamin C, more than 60 milligrams a day, i got to go to the doctor and get a prescription. And that's for every vitamin that I wish to take above and beyond the daily, uh, what the hell are they called now? Kind of RDA? No, that yeah, don't exist anymore. Recommended daily so, allowance? Uh, don't agree exist anymore it's, it's three, Listen, other, three other letters now it sounds like a like a greedy racket to me of course it is a racket which benefits the haves 
and screw the Washington up. consensus. The people on top. Correct. Every single benefit that our government can give or whatever must be, according to the Washington consensus, given to those who already have. The system is rigged, people. How many times do I have to tell you when I'm online? Many times, obviously. The system is rigged. Forget about the two party. You know how many organizations and groups um, of progressives exist that are just dedicated to the Democratic Party? Like the Democratic Party are, is the party of FDR? No. And, and and Harry Truman? No. That that Democratic Party is does not exist Long today. Finished, doesn't exist. And besides, the benefits that FDR was able to get through and etc. He was forced to do. He was pushed to do. That's what you're supposed. That's what our government is supposed to be. We are supposed to be in control. The sovereigns it says we are the sovereigns in the Constitution. In other words, you, you have to be, like Jesse Ventura says, vigilant. Vigilant, and then you must, you must require, demand, ask for, in order to get it. But today you can't do that because the corporations pay too much. You're not allowed in the office. Of your, there, there's a big stink going on right now with uh, 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 Representative Scott Garrett, yeah. the Republican here in New Jersey, okay? Because he doesn't listen to his constituents. So writing to your congressman or senator is a waste of time. Today is a waste. You don't even get a personal answer or reply. Exactly. You don't get a personal reply. No, no. You get an automated reply that goes out is generated to everybody who writes and then if you if you phone in some secretary or something okay I'll put you down on that list on the, uh, the uh, I don't like list you know what I mean unless you got some moolah in an envelope you ain't getting in that door oh by the way uh, with, with all senators and congress people at the bottom after you uh, you you get ready to email what you have to say, it, it mentions uh, it asks you for a donation. Of course they do. Uh, of course they do. Capitalism is not difficult to understand. It's really plain and simple. You got a bunch of obsessively greedy, evil bastards on one side. And you got all the the nice, good suckers on the other side. Yeah, they're taking advantage of people. Yeah. Patients will have to visit their doctors every three months to get a new prescription. Nearly 137 million prescriptions for hydrocodone products were dispensed in the United States in 2013. Wow. There are several hundred brand name and generic products containing hydrocodone, often combinations of the drug and an over-the-counter painkiller, or in the form of cough suppressants, such as Tussagon and Hydrocodon. Sounds like monsters that would fight Godzilla. Yeah, I know. That's a god in Hydrocodon. Hydrocodon? Roar! Roar! <laughs> uh, it is water is coming. Opiate? Painkillers? Hey, hey, hey. That's going to turn some people on when they hear opiate. People opiate painkillers? account for nearly 17,000 American deaths each year. 
according to federal authorities. Right. In 2012, New Jersey reported more than 700 deaths involving prescription drugs, especially oxycodone. Sure. We, New Jerseyans are in a lot of pain. We're having Chris Christie as a governor. Everybody has to take a painkiller for that. But hydrocodone products are also widely abused in New Jersey. Local and state officials have said Vicodin and other, hydro and other hydrocodone products containing acetaminophen. Ah, uh, Tylenol. Uh -huh. Over the counter. Acetaminophen, yes. So it's in, you know, a yeah. lot of that Not crap. to mention the intestinal bleeding that can be caused, uh, you know, in high amounts, of course. But uh, speaking of our healthcare system, my sister Lisa, who recently had a, a partial hysterectomy and, and who is recovering fine, very rapidly, uh, her bill came in from uh, Teenex uh, Holy Name Hospital in Bergen County, Teaneck, New, New Jersey, and she was only uh, at the hospital overnight once, one night. One day, one day. And her bill came in, and uh, it was $78,000. Yeah, well. And uh, after the insurance, she owes $3,500. So you, you talk about a racket, U.S. healthcare system, seventy-eight grand for practically an outpatient surgical procedure. She didn't have to stay overnight, but the doctors just suggested, you know what, stay overnight. It would have been cheaper. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. It would have been cheaper to stay at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. It's like $1,500 a night. 78 grand. And, and they use robotics to perform the surgery on it. The doctor just sat in, in control, like a, I guess like a Sony PlayStation kind of thing. Yeah, 78 grand. How about that? Get your red thing here. What's that, the siphon? Oh. Oh, you mean this? Keep it. This? The slide whistle? Yeah. Oh, keep it handy. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, any any uh, any uh, Ferguson, Missouri uh, readings to the, this week? Sarah Palin. Go ahead. This is how... Sarah Palin and Michelle Bubblehead Bachman sound to me because they're blithering idiots. Okay. Sarah Palin has lost her magic. Lost her marbles, too. The defeat of her choice Tuesday in a Republican Senate primary in her home state of Alaska capped a primary season in which her favored candidates across the nation have stumbled. She stumbled and fell on her head. Palin's signature achievement from her time as Alaska governor Signature achievements? Yeah, a state tax on oil companies was also headed toward defeat in a referendum on Tuesday, dealing a double whammy loss to Palin in her home state and highlighting her declining influence. Well, uh, Republicans and Fox News, they sure like her enough to stick a camera in front of her all the time. Only four of the 15 Congressional candidates endorsed by Palin nationwide this year have won their primaries. A far worse performance than in the previous two elections, when Palin played a role as kingmaker, and her approval was eagerly sought by candidates looking for an edge with Republican voters. Palin remains talented at rising money. But her influence on the actual political process is diminishing rapidly. 
said John Fury, a Republican uh, consultant and former aide to GOP leadership in the House. Palin had urged her fellow Alaskans to vote for Tea Party candidate Joe Miller on Tuesday in states in the state's Republican primary. And Alaskans received robocalls with Palin's voice urging them to get out and vote for Miller. It didn't work. Miller was easily defeated by Republican establishment candidate Dan Sullivan, who will face Democratic Senator Mark Baggage in ba November. Baggage? Baggage. I hope he doesn't carry too much baggage with him. Oh dear. Palin <laughs> also lost the effort to defend yeah. her signature tax on oil companies that operate in Alaska. Oh boy. Her successor as governor, Sean Parnell, worked with the state legislature to reverse Palin's tax system last year, saying it was hurting oil production. Oh, they're not making enough money to pay taxes. Poor babies. Yeah, this is this is uh oh is they... this the first time she recognizes this palin called the move crony capitalism she must have heard that term from s somewhere else yeah not the republican party i'm sure crony capitalism what is the, the what is that the pot calling the kettle black and back the referendum to restore the tax it was losing by nearly seven thousand is. Now, who in Alaska is going to vote against that? It puts 2000 or so dollars into their pocket every year. Who's going to vote against that? Of course, the people of Alaska are most likely a uh, 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 right-wing religious nut. Yeah, but who's uh, going to vote against rednecks? that? Huh? Who's going to vote against that? It's already putting money into their pocket every year. Why would they do that? I suspect there's something going on with the protein. Okay? Mm -hmm. While Palin has become more of a reality television star than a politician since quitting her job as Alaska governor in 2009, her endorsement still carried weight in recent elections. The majority of candidates she supported in 2010 won. Palin's picks won an impressive string of victories two years later, including Ted Cruz! Ah, uh, the tin man from The Wizard of Oz, Ted Cruz. But this year, Palin backed failed attempts to unseat incumbent Senators Thad Cochran in Mississippi, Lamar Alexander in Tennessee, her Senate picks in Oklahoma, Minnesota and Georgia all failed to advance beyond the Republican primary as well. Just one of Palin's choices for the House, Barry Loudermilk what? in Georgia. Loudermilk? Loudermilk. One the Republican primary election. Palin's picks for House lost in Texas, oh, North Carolina, New Jersey, Florida, <sighs> and Georgia. Florida. Florida and Georgia. Okay? Well, if you don't have anything about the police brutality and the, the police state in Ferguson, I, I want to... We don't know whether it was... F Police brutality yet. You're the killing I'm talking to. You're trying to tell the SWAT me. teams, uh, the militarized police gathered against the people protesting. Yes. That was police brutality. 
but we don't know about the killing yet. The six shots that the yeah. young man, Mr. Uh, received. Yeah, that he received? Correct. In other words, what you're trying to tell me is the case is still under investigation. And it they, is right now and they don't have a grand enough, jury. So they don't have enough evidence in yet. Okay. No one, to my knowledge, yet has even spoken to the policeman involved. Well, I heard... Mr. Um, Darren Wilson. I heard one of the uh, the killings of an unarmed black youth in, uh, I don't know if it was now. California. It, was, it wasn't Ferguson. Uh, no, it was the, next door to Ferguson. The, police, the police officer lied and said he, he received a, a broken uh, eye socket, a fractured eye socket from, from the, the... Well, now that's what they're saying Mr. The Darren Wilson got. Traitor. He's got facial damage. But where's the verification of this? We don't have it. That's yeah. why I say... It's still under investigation. We, that's correct. The same thing with Mr. Christie here in New Jersey. His okay? shenanigans are still under investigation. And Scott Walker is still under investigation? Exactly. And but so is Rick Perry. Now. Rick Perry, and there's an indictment going on. Mr. Rick Perry had to go into the police station the other day to get fingerprinted and photographed. Booked, in other words. Mug shots. They should sure take their sweet time when they investigate cases, don't they? Well, what do you want them to do? Like in the old days? Hang them up right away? Yeah, I like Judge to see, Roy Bean. I like to see all all Republicans get strung up. What if they're not guilty? Oh, they're guilty if they're if they're, if they're right wing conservatives. They're guilty. How about David Brock? They're 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 soldiers of Satan, huh? David Brock, the guy who was instrumental in <coughs> undermining. Anita Hill, oh. back when. David Brock understood after a while what the right wing was, and now he's not right wing anymore. Really? What about those people? Are there some of those that you would string up? Converts? Converts? Yeah. Yeah. People who saw Maybe the Maybe not many, but... People who saw the light? Yeah. There may not be many, but maybe there are a few. So, was Anita Hill... Um, uh, Anita Hill was correct. Was she sexually harassed? Yes. In other words, it wasn't a mutual. It was it wasn't nothing of that. A mutual get together between her That's and correct. Clarence Thomas. That's true. And but then Mr. on but top, Mr. David Brock, yeah, and others undermined her story, etc., so that the people never believed her. Yeah. Okay. Well, on top of that, Clarence Thomas uh, represented the evil Monsanto for a while. His wife does. I thought he did. Well, he's with her. What, she never speaks about her job to him? It's her that is the... Uh, oh. Uh, has the relationship oh, okay. with her. Okay. Yeah, you got to always wait before you completely believe something that's posted on the Internet. That's great. You have to uh, uh, always he, question everything like the late George Carlin said. Teach your children to question everything. He should, though, recuse himself whenever cases like that come up. Mm -hmm. Okay? That his wife is involved in or whatever. Okay. So that's it's it. It's a bunch of bullshit. Wait a second. Oh, there's one more? I got something else, hey. All right. That might be of interest. One for the road. The Gideon Bibles. Are going back in the Navy's nightstand drawers. In June, the United States Navy ordered housekeepers at thousands of Navy owned guest lodges near U.S. and international bases to remove the Bibles and any other religious materials from their rooms. Scriptures would remain available on request. Okay. But, right. a public outcry prompted by a social media alert 
from the American Family Association. I bet they're right wing. Yes. But they love those Bibles that they never read. The ones they know nothing about. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. How accurate is the Gideon version? Gideon is not a version. Oh, it's an organization. It's the King James version. Oh, okay. okay. Gideon is a foundation which okay. places the Bibles for free. They, they, Gideon was a gentleman in the Bible. Oh, I thought maybe Gideon meant that they uh, they laugh uh, every day, nonstop at work. Gideon. But anyway, uh, and protest by the Chaplain Alliance for Religious Liberty led the Navy to reverse course. Religious liberty. Liber so they're, they're, they're shoving... Uh, not, for, not for Muslims, of course. What? Not for Muslims. Muslims? You mean like mar Muslims? Muslims! Oh, Muslims. Yeah, but... The, not for them, yeah, religious liberty. Yeah, but you, by shoving your version of Christianity down the public's throat, what about the non-Christians that are in the Navy? Well, the, 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 or atheists? That's what I just said. They, they, they don't care about them. So how could it be... Liberty, religious well, liberty. Well, because they throw these words around. Freedom, yeah, liberty. Like the Clean Air uh, yes, Act. Yes, yes. Citizens United. Now, how the hell did they come to that conclusion that... When it was just a right-wing cabal. A right-wing cabal <laughs> to give everything, to give more and everything to the rich is... That, that the citizens of the United States yeah. would be totally in favor of it. We were all it, united. So let's call it Citizens United. <laughs> now, the Navy's religious accommodation policies with regard to the placement of religious materials are under review. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the Bibles, which contain the New Testament and Psalms, but no Hebrew Bible, but that's not the Gideon. It's not complete. Theory. It's not complete. We'll again be tucked into nightstand drawers. This is great news. Tim Wildman of the American Family Association said. A letter from the Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Foundation prompted the original order to remove the Bible. You also need a concordance to properly read the Bible. The atheists propose that the Navy offer Bibles and other texts, including an atheist treatise, the Born Again Skeptic's Guide to the Bible, on request at the front desk. The bottom line is that the Navy's preferential treatment of Bibles shows an unconstitutional preference for Christianity, over all other religions, and over non-religion. We are confident that ultimately the Navy will revise its policy to conform with the requirements of the Constitution. Do not mix church and state. Which each Navy service remember, member has sworn an oath to uphold and defend. Yeah, like Edward Snowden? The leader of the Chaplain Alliance for Religious Liberty saw it differently. A Bible in a hotel room is no more illegal than a chaplain in the military. FFRFs is not pressing only the Navy for change. The group has sent a similar letter to the Air Force, which removed the Bibles from its lodges in 2012 and returned them after a similar outcry. Well, I like to have a, a moment of silence for the uh, American reporter uh, that was beheaded by ISIS. Uh, I from what I understand, the rescue attempt was botched. And intelligence, I think, messed up with his location. The rescue attempt went 
like beautiful. They right. weren't there. Oh, so the, 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 the information that intelligence gave the U.S. military was completely wrong in terms of the location. Or ISIS found out about it and moved them. But the, uh, the, the, uh, the episode went perfectly. Helicopters, planes, special forces, etc. Maybe steel, uh, uh, steel no one team was hurt. six. Yeah. No one was hurt. No one was, you know. But his location was completely false. The intelligence was off the beam. Ugh. Okay? That happened to Carter. Back in Carter when he tried to rescue the Iranian hostages. The Iranian hostages. And guess who was involved in that? Which I suspect sabotage from. Who? Oliver North. Really? That's correct. I wouldn't trust that man. The, the guy that got with his... The, with the, with the uh, Jolly Rancher. The guy that, that got his own radio show. Yeah. Well, G the guy Gordon. that lied to Congress. Etc. G. Gordon Liddy got and his got own. got out of it. He also got his own radio show. G. Yeah. Gordon Liddy. And he spent time. Yeah. Oliver North did not spend time. Poindexter did not spend time. They all should have. Casey didn't spend any time. You know, I suspect that Casey is that I mean, he may not be alive yet. But I think he was put into the witness program. Witness protection program? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because it was all of a sudden he died of a brain tumor. Under Reagan. Yeah. yeah. Casey, the uh, CIA guy. So I don't I don't trust the intel on that either. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Alright, I'm I'm done here. Alright. I'm done with you. Moment of silence. Oh, you sound like Chris Christie. Moment of, uh, or Barbara Bush. When you when you disagree you. when you disagree with the Republican, the, the, they'll say this conversation is over or something. Ended. I'm through with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could. I I I. I've, what the hell? Was somebody was interviewed? Recently, and they did that also. Like well, once you ask a question that's that uh, encourages a revelation about a subject, and you know, which they don't want to give you information, which they don't want to give you mess, uh, information on, they they end the subject. They end the car, they end the interview. Exactly. They terminate it. They terminate it, man. All right. Moment of silence <coughs> for the reporter. Okay. Thank you for joining us uh, for Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. We'll see you next time. I don't want to say next week because anything could happen. What it says on WBAI? What is anything it? Could happen. Anything could happen. Oh, you know what I came across? I came across a recorded uh, uh, a speech that was really great by the late Paul Harvey. I posted it this on... This is Paul Harvey? Yeah, no, no, he, it was a speech from way back, right. an old speech, and everything he said was right on the money about what's going on today in, the, in the country. Paul was a right winger. He was? Yes. Well, his speech sounded very progressive to me, but... Um, He's a right winger. I mean, was. He was, was a right winger. All right. Personally. I know. All righty. Say so long to these people. So long, people. This has been a Megalife 21 production.